Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support. Now these are your readings for April, but before I do the tarot, I would like to mention a couple of things. Um, the painting that you saw at the beginning of my video, and there's another one featured right at the end of the video, they are done by Maria Simeonido, and her address on Instagram is at the bottom of the um, the painting that you will see on your screen. So for those of you that are art lovers, she's a wonderful new talent who's really going places. I love her style and I will be working with her in the future. I will tell you about it when it's time. Um, at the moment, I'd like to also announce that I will have I will be featuring a um, another talent, which is a tarot and psychic. Her name is Bellatrix Star, and I have shared her videos on my Facebook, and I do that all the time. I follow her because, you know, I love her work. She's always on point. She's, you know, her readings always resonate with me, so... That's why I am going to feature her. She's going to do a video for me, especially on love. So it's going to be a love reading and it's going to be in the next few days. So look out for that. Um, and she also, you know, offers private readings and there's not a long waiting time to receive a, a reading from her. So have a go, you know, go to her channel check her out and see what she offers she's really really good she's a double Scorpio so uh, very strong on the uh, occult services the metaphysics she's got it so give her a chance have a look at her work and see if it resonates with you and as I said I will be uh, putting the link in the bottom in the description box but I will be featuring her on my channel so look out for the video very soon in the next few days and let's talk about the astrology a little bit. I won't go into a lot of detail because I don't want to make these videos too long. So what's most important is first of all we're in Aries season so happy birthday to you Aries people out there and we're having a new moon in Aries on the 5th of April which will be in a few days, but make sure that you put your wishes out to the universe uh, roughly on the 7th when you can actually see that new moon crescent in the sky. So it's the first new moon of the astrological year. So it's a very special new moon. So take the advantage and send your wishes out to the divine. Now, there's still, you know, Mercury has come out of retrograde about three days ago, two, three days ago, but little Mercury is still on top of Neptune, so there's still, you know, a lot of confusion around. So make sure that um, you still try and communicate clearly. I think that with the sun being in Aries, because it's very happy there, slowly the information is starting to come through. Um, signs, synchronicities are coming through. Actually, today for me, I was sitting out there, out in the backyard and a feather fell from the sky. Now I don't know for those of you that have looked up what a feather means, um, you know, in the spiritual world, it's got a lot of meanings and I find it to be a beautiful sign. So for those of you that are interested or that it's happened to you, please comment in the, dis you know, in the comments below. Um, and, you know, little signs and things like uh, these are going to be happening for us from now on. I believe that pieces of information are going to start coming through. And I'd also like to say that in about a week and a half, so in about 10 days, Jupiter will be going retrograde. So that's a big, big thing that I, I truly believe that there will be blessings coming in. That's my intuition. That's what Jupiter retrograde um, is saying to me, especially that it's in its home sign of Sagittarius. So it's going to be retrograde for about four months from April to August. 
so it's going to be a fair uh, bit of time and that'll be interesting to see what comes up so you know even though mercury's come out come out of retrograde jupiter in about 10 days is starting to go retrograde and then um, there's other planets that will start retrograding as well so you know pluto not so long after and then saturn as well so we're moving into a time of retrogrades people so it's a time to you know it's a time to work on things being given the chance to do that that's what it's all about so let's look at the positive side of retrogrades i totally see retrogrades as positive times okay to have the time have the chance to go in go you know redirect the energies turn inwards and just have a chance to work on things see things and you know we know that with retrogrades the energies are very powerful so wow having you know saturn pluto and jupiter retrograde in the near future is a big deal so i'm so looking forward to mercury moving into aries venus is in pisces it's finishing up a big cycle you know pisces is the last sign of the zodiac and then when venus joins um aries as well uh, i think it's all systems go even though some parts of our life we will have the chance with the retrogrades of course to work on so let's go on to your readings right now because there's a lot of work to be done thank you so much for your support i do appreciate it very much thank you thank you and just you know um something that i've been thinking of doing because i've been quite busy and that's why the readings tend to be late uh, recently i've been quite busy so i'm actually thinking of putting a hold on the personal and private readings um, so if you're needing a personal reading please get in quick because i have a feeling around the 15th of april i'm going to be stopping that for about a month so for those of you that want a personal reading from myself um, i would advise to do that quickly because i'm almost um, full and the only suggestion from me then would be that you could get a personal reading from my fellow tarot reader and psychic bellatrix star uh, and again as i said she's very very good so that's up to you guys just putting it out there um, so you know what's happening all right let's go on to your readings hello dear capricorn welcome to divine debut this is kathy speaking thank you so so much for being here this is your April reading, so beginning to mid-April 2019, general and love, divine spread. Uh, today's actually the third, I do apologise, um, it's just been really, really busy, so I just can't seem to get these videos out uh, a lot earlier, and to tell you the truth, I don't really believe in doing the readings like a month early or something like that. Even two weeks I see as a bit too early. So I like to to try and do the videos like a couple of days before, you know, you know, strike when the iron's hot in a, in a sense. So, and then, you know, something may happen one day and that's it. <clears throat> I'm late. Nevertheless, now the energies so mercury has gone over neptune now mercury is at a bigger degree than what neptune is so i believe that the clarity is slowly starting to come in mercury has gone direct now of course but it was over neptune for a few days so so much confusion um and chaos in not knowing you know believing the worst and then all of a sudden the light starts to seep in very slowly. Now we're having a new moon in Aries and that's on the 5th in a couple of days but as I've said at the beginning of the uh, video, wait till you can actually see the new moon crescent in the sky before you can actually send out your wishes to the divine. 
because it is, you know, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Um, it's an astrological new moon. It's the first new moon for the astrological year. So it's a very special, very, very special uh, new moon. As well as that, all the planets are still direct. But Jupiter will be moving retrograde in about eight days. So let's see what gifts are coming in. Okay, dear Capricorn, let's take your Karma Dharma card for Capricorn. And it's this one. So we've got Gemini. Gemini is a love relationship. It's a partnership. Could even be business, but it's, you know, it's a karmic relationship if we're looking at love. So Gemini is where Mars is right now. So there's going to be a lot of communication. Gemini is the communicator, yeah? They are ruled by um, by Mercury. And therefore having Mars in Gemini says that, you know, Mars is our drive. So lots of communication in a passionate sort of a way as well. Um, it's So Mars is going to be quite quick in Gemini. So passionate, maybe even a little bit aggressive could be. Because if we think of Gemini, they're air. It's an air sign. And, well, okay, so air and fire can be quite explosive. So, dear Capricorn, I just dropped two cards. And I'm using the Witch's Tarot. Let me cut the cards for you. So, April, beginning to mid-April 2019. And I tend to really like the witch's tarot because it's it's beautiful like it you know it goes well with my energy i um i feel a strong connection to it so look at what fell out so you've got the judgment card and you've got the wheel of fortune so there are many changes going on for you dear capricorn let's not forget that wow um yeah so you've got the nodes in your in your sign. So the north node of the moon is in Cancer. South node of the moon is in Capricorn. Now you have, you are hosting the south node, Pluto and Saturn. It's all about karma. And this card here says it. <clears throat> Excuse me, karma. And it shows the eclipsed moon. And we've got circular energy here so things are going around and around and that's what karma is so it's really hard many times to break free from karmic situations but what I'm thinking is because the south node is with Pluto and this is the card of Pluto which speaks of Scorpio and Sagittarius this is the will of fortune okay so the will of fortune is Sagittarius and Jupiter rules Sagittarius so what I'm thinking is that, okay, um, as I said, the south node is right on top of Pluto in your sign at this time. So it's very calming. It's got to do with the eclipses, what you're going through. And in the position here, this would be your home area, your foundation. So what's going on for you in your foundation, in your security, even if, even if it's career, because... For some people, their security is their work. So, yeah, your place of work, your own business could be your security. Therefore, this applies to you as your foundation. So, yeah, with the Karma card, the Judgment card, the Pluto card, right on top of the South Node, well, it's quite obvious um, because Pluto and the South Node are you know, something is changing drastically. So Pluto is death and transformation. South node, as well as Pluto, they're all about karma. South node is letting go of what is familiar, what is the known to you. And the nodes, you know, they're all about fate. So it's a time of karmic fate happening for you now. So what is leaving your life now, what you are sweeping away from your energy is meant to go and it's meant to be the right thing for you um, now because we've got the wheel 
beneath so first before the karma card which the karma card for me always speaks of being given a second chance because this is an awakening all right but we do have the eclipsed moon here which is very obvious so I'm thinking okay the wheel of fortune that you're on this wheel now it's turning in your favor so what comes after the wheel it's the wake-up call it's the whatever has died is coming back to life um, you're being awakened if you have been hibernating if you've been away and when I say away I mean physically even psychologically and I'm getting the picture of the hermit so I feel that some of you have been in hibernation um, worried about you know maybe you're in between the energies we're smack bang in the middle of the eclipses right now and you are affected very strongly by the eclipses so January eclipses and July eclipses we're right in the middle now and this is like you know the two energies joining together so interestingly enough in July the next eclipses are you know I can smell the energy of those for you so July is going to be quite pivotal for you it's going to be important now dear Capricorn I'm going to take the I'm going to take the divine position the divine card for you okay so planetarily what's going on with the planets for you and you've got temperance so this is beautiful this very much speaks to me of Jupiter um, now you may be dealing with someone who's got strong Sagittarius it could even be in your chart but here because I've got Pluto and the um, Sagittarius it could be someone who's on the cusp so you know Jupiter is getting ready in a few days to turn retrograde and I believe that that's when the changes will start coming through I think that the beacon of light uh, little beacons of light are going to be coming through for the next four months but you know as I've told you in the past Jupiter will be joining Capricorn roughly in December if I'm not mistaken um, could be November could be December I'm not uh, don't quote me on that right now I don't remember exactly but roughly then yeah roughly then it could even be around the end of November 25th 26th or something like that so um, you know Jupiter being in your sign is going to bring the blessings now what you don't know is that for those of you that are of course rising sign Capricorn that means Jupiter is in your 12th house you can't see the blessings but things are working beneath the surface you know this is the divine these are the angels trying to work out something in your favor and look at that rainbow in the background you know what happens with a rainbow after rain um, you know after the rain when the Sun comes out well of course it's usually raining to see it to be able to see the rainbow but usually it's you know a cloudy day where it's raining in some area and then you see this beautiful um, beautiful rainbow in the horizon so you know there's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow and temperance is telling you that you need to be patient you need to temper yourself you need to trust and you know hold on just hold on okay so let's see what's in the hidden position what you can't see okay in the hidden position dear Capricorn we have we have the page of Pentacles so yeah for some of you whatever you're actually because I feel that this would be your energy you are earth after all so whatever you're starting now don't start it until the 7th until the 7th of April if you're starting a new venture a new project um, anything to do with you know, monetary matters like you, if you're investing trying to lay down the foundation of something to do with your finances um, you know give it a few days if not on the 7th then once mercury moves into Aries that's a really good time as well but yeah it's a very powerful new moon in Aries so if you can start whatever this is um, and you know started around the 7th and if this is a message 
it could also be a message which promises some sort of stable financial um, or physical earnings or um, advantages and it's something that's you know tangible material um, that's coming to you there's the promise because I usually see the page of pentacles as it, you know the page is holding that ace of pentacles and the ace of pentacles is the biggest blessing of all but the page is the idea it's like setting the foundation to get to that ace so that's how I see this is the potential let's see what's in the recent past for you and we've got the king of swords dear Capricorn always you've always seemed to be dealing with this king of swords what is it with you what is it some of you are still dealing with an air sign so Aquarius more than likely uh, Gemini or Libra now I'm going to say that because both Aquarius and Capricorn are ruled by um, Saturn maybe for some of you this could even be your energy and the way you're showing up so let's take the now position and we've got the Knight of Cups so this is water a water sign so it would be Scorpio energy more than likely let's take your your crowning position your highest ideal roughly around your mid heaven area for those of you that are familiar with your chart what's going on and we've got the seven of Pentacles which is you know a, a moment of stagnation a moment of pause but pausing is good because it is a seven and sevens are the divine so it is a time of pause we're still trying to make clarity of things so yeah some of you may even be taking a break from work let's take a card on the action and advice and you've got a wish card you've got the nine of cups which is beautiful so what's in between you've got you know someone's holding the tenth cup here there's that tenth cup so you you are smack bang right in the middle and this could even be your partner if they've got earth in their chart because you know you could be dealing with a Scorpio who's got earth in their chart so it could more than likely be a Taurian because Taurus is the seventh house of Scorpio so some of you may be dealing with a Taurus Sun Moon or Rising I'm gonna say but yeah the nine of cups is a wish card what more do we want you need to keep the faith now you're looking at the offer you're looking at this cup you know we've got this knight of cups that's offering you their love a new beginning in love now of course this could be your energy as well so it could go either way if that is the case if you've made the offer to someone else someone who's showing up as earth here um, or they've got strong earth they're looking at it seriously and the advice is that a wish is going to come true let's look at the outcome oh wow <laughs> I love the tower you don't know how much I love it it's one of my favorite cards now many people say it's Scorpio I say it's Uranus Uranus is in Taurus so if we are talking about a Taurus then you know Taurus is changing their ways they're looking at their values they're radically changing things in their in their life overall because Uranus being in Taurus Taurus is like the first house let's say for them it relates to the their whole life so yeah changing things up and I remember that uh, wow I do remember that the last Taurus reading that was done um, not the April one the end of uh, mid to end of March was called reinventing themselves so there are massive changes if you for those of you that are dealing with a Taurian now yes we you know the signs that I'm mentioning could be Sun Moon or rising so depends on who you are and how much this reading resonates for you don't forget it's a general reading so of course the tower for me is um, Uranus and it's a radical change 
But if we're looking at it as Scorpio, yes, you've got the Judgment card here as well, which it does speak of having a second chance. Yes? So what I just noticed, and you know I've used these cards many, many times. So what I've noticed now is that in this particular card, as you can see, the tower is, the crowning of the tower is a crown. <laughs> So, you know, the crown is sort of coming off. So that to me says that the royalty is going away. And what does that mean? It means that there is a humbling, a humbling, not so stuck up, not so um, narcissistic energy here. So this tower, whatever it's changing and shifting, is going to be quite humbling. So someone's getting off their high horse. That's another way of putting it. So let's take another card. What is this tower? And we've got the Queen of Swords. Oh my God. Dear Capricorn. Okay. So I'm going to say this and hopefully your next reading will not show up again with this air sign. So you've obviously got your back to this air sign who's still in the picture but they're in the recent past so it's, it's as though they're not fully in the picture for those of you that are, have still got someone lingering around trying to either communicate with you or you know they've been quite narcissistic quite difficult you've got your back turned to them now you're going to speak the truth and I feel that whoever this king of swords is um, is they're going to come down a few steps, a few steps. So you're, they're going to get humbled. They're going to. It's as though they're receiving the receiving the karma, the lesson. As I said, this is a very karmic time, especially for you, dear Capricorn. And Pluto on top of the South Node means that you are finally getting rid of some situation some person something to do around karma so yeah you are speaking your truth you are looking to the future of course and many many changes now i'm going to take more cards obviously let's see what the gemini card is what's this lover's head over heart decision which can be a choice. So some of you are actually still, you're in two minds, maybe. So you've got the water sign, which would be more than likely Scorpio or Taurus. Um, and there is, I'm going to throw the Sag in there as well, as well as the Gemini. But for some of you, the air sign could be Gemini instead of Uranus. So, so we've got the Four of Swords. More swords, which, you know, the Four of Swords many times, yes, it is a time of taking taking a break but it's also you know those three swords that heartbreak in your head in your dreams it's as though as as though someone is trying to heal from that situation let's take another card and we've got the queen of cups here wow so i'm going to say dear capricorn that Okay, because I've already mentioned a Scorpio, now we've got the Knight of Cups here. So those of you that are making a choice, it's obviously between those signs. I feel that obviously most of you will be closing the door on this air sign because the water sign is coming through. Now the water sign is a knight. He's not showing up as a king. He is offering his cup to you. So there could be a difference in maturity, the female, let's say, or whoever takes on the role of the female is a little bit more progressed more mature has more knowledge more experience than the male so it could even be an age difference yes but it can also be just the maturity level and if we look at it the other way we've even got like we've got an air sign and we've got the water sign here for those males out there that um, that are watching this reading. 
So let's take more cards. I'd like to take a card on the divine position. Okay, now I want to say that um, you know many times that the air signs can also be known to be, um, you know, solicitors, people who who work in the legal uh, pro in a legal profession, um, but also they can be around, you know, medicine, doctors. So for those of you that uh, are dealing with divorce, then uh, maybe you are dealing with a couple. They could even be both, you know, they could be a couple, a married couple, let's say, that's in business together. So they're partners as well as being a couple. So I'd, if that's the case, if you are in a legal situation and, you you know, you've got a solicitor or two um, speaking on your behalf, acting on your behalf, I would say that the the female solicitor is the strongest one with the strongest mind. So, and this could even be your changing solicitors, um, you know, getting uh, someone else to represent you if there has been no, if you haven't been happy with the male in the past. So, yes, as I was saying, if this is business, I mean, this is amazing. This is really, really good. You know that the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, and Jupiter always brings blessings. Now, Jupiter can also be about legalities as well. So the fact, the matter of the fact is that the Wheel of Fortune here is the next step is the Karma card, which is the calling. It's a wake-up call, but it's a second chance, being given another chance, and that's what we need. Let's look at the temperance. And it's this card which doesn't want to come out. Oh, wow. The sun. And the sun is Leo. The sun is children. The sun is cl uh, clarity. Now, the sun is in Aries. So it's Aries time. So um, Aries, the sun in Aries is very, very happy. It's in its own element. So the beginnings at this time in the next couple of days are going to be beautiful. Now the sun is also the heart. So this is true love. This, um, some of you may have children already, or there is promise of children. Um, because the sun is like, you know, the house of Leo is all about children. And it's all also about taking risks. Now, if you are in, uh, pursuing a creative uh, business then with the sun card because it's you know the sun is what you give birth to even if it's a business um, it's looking great um, so there is maybe you're needing to invest a bit more money but you do have someone that's um, because this is in the position of the unknown you do have someone maybe aiding you with finances financial help And because we've got, because we've got, you know, Scorpio here. Scorpio is if you're needing help from, um, you know, from external, um, just like the house of Scorpio is, you know, other people's money. Maybe you're going for a loan. It looks like, yeah, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. So let's take now, and I said I'm, um, I want to go backwards, so... I did take the Queen of Swords, but I'm going to take another card on the Tower and the Queen of Swords and then just go backwards. Okay, so let's take the Queen of Swords. And we've got the Six of Cups, which, wow, Six of Cups, you know, is the Soulmate card. Six of Cups is also children, it's innocence, and it's still dealing with someone from the past or someone from a past life. Of course, the you know, the lovers is having dealt with someone in a past life. And because this is karmic, obviously you are dealing with major karma with the south node in your in your sign. 
it's very, very obvious. So obviously someone's coming back from the past to finished, to finish business that was left undone. Now this could be from your childhood for some of you, for others it's from a previous life. Okay, so the Nine of Cups. Oh wow, Capricorn, Four of Wands. <laughs> Celebrate good times. Oh yeah, four of wands. That's a celebration. That is having fun. That is putting down the foundations to a steady personal life. Um, you know, many times I see the four of wands even as a baby shower. Even though, yes, I don't actually have the Empress here. I do, I do have the two cards of children and Leo is the house of true love, flirtation. So for those of you that are single, you've got someone new in the picture. It's a time of having fun and you will be having fun. Let's look at the Seven of Pentacles in your crowning area. So Four of Cups so there is someone who is thinking, will I take that cup or will I not? Now usually I see the Four of Cups as, of course, because it's it's a four, it's got to do again with your home. So it's a very serious offer, I think, that's coming in because the person who's offering you this cup serious is very serious about you. They're wanting to build a home with you. Now, when I say build, it could even be, you know, physically build a home with you. So for, for those of you that are in a committed partnership and relationship, then this is your partner telling you that they want to maybe, you know, start living together but thinking of actually building your new home. So this could even be an offer of let's get married, let's get hitched for some of you. So it's a very serious offer that's coming through. So take your time with the Seven of Pentacles. Let me see what the Knight of Cups is showing. Oh wow! <laughs> Capricorn, it does not get any better than this. It does not. So the knight is just an offer. Or let's say that he's trying to match your maturity. He's actually, you know, coming out. He's explaining what is in his heart. He is opening that heart and just pouring out the love. He's... Now, if this is the same person, and that's going to be maybe for one or two of you, then it's someone that was holding back. Now they're here and they're telling you what they feel about you. Just like a rose opens the petals, that's how his heart is opening. Wow. Oh, you know, when I said the rose, I just remembered the beautiful song uh, by Met, Bet, uh, Bet Midler. Uh, yeah. Bet Midler, geez, I haven't said her name for ages. So it looks like your your romantic life, your life in general, um, you know, that rosebud is starting to open. It's starting to um, be seen by the light and the light is giving it, it is feeding it with warmth, with love, with truth. With truth. <clears throat> Sorry, now the King of Swords, King of Swords, more clarity please on this King. Okay, all right, oh wow. <laughs> this is really funny here, the way it fell um, <clears throat> in the reverse. So it looks like this Queen of Cups was really, really stuck, like really stuck, but she kept... Whoever this is, if this is your energy, she kept persisting because the Eight of Wands in the reverse to me 
turns into the seven of wands and that is like you've got the higher ground but you're up against some situations but insisting and persevering gets you where you need to be now this is also Cupid's arrows maybe she was holding back on sending those messages of love okay maybe she was waiting for the clarity so I was, you know, I said that even though the card fell there, I'm going to take this on the King of Swords because that's what I said. Now it's funny that we've got the Ace of Pentacles with the King of Swords and we've got the Eight of Wands. So really, I mean, this is really, it's a nightmare. It's a thriller for me right now because I've seen the King of Swords as someone who you are cutting away. For those of you that this is the same person Remember, I've already mentioned, yes, I did mention um, if it is uh, the same person that they could have Taurus. So this is this could also mean for those of you that that are really dealing with a person like this that you're closing the door on, first of all, he was all about the money, okay? He was all about you, the finances. So that was more important to him, it looks like. But here, also the Ace of Pentacles says that this King of Swords is, they could be traveling, they could be leaving, they could be flying away, getting out of your life, and they're having a new beginning. So that's what that could mean. Now, if this is an actual solicitor in your life, then... He's he would have been quite expensive, I would think, because this Ace of Pentacles is is huge. So let me I'm gonna take some Sabilas on this position because I need more clarity here. Okay, let's look at this page of pentacles. I'm just looking at the King of Swords. Now, could this King of Swords be someone who travels by air very often? Maybe their work, maybe they're starting a new job, a new business, where they're traveling a lot. Could be. Or they could be moving, starting something new at a distance. Let me look at the Page of Pentacles. And we've got the Seven of Cups another seven so um, confusion but I would say choices yes now this is Piscean energy we're still Mercury is still there Neptune's still quite strong they're conjunct they're still together now the moon it's funny that the moon is right it's the moon has just passed over Venus in Pisces so there could be romantic conversations there could be intuitive dreams that you're seeing, dreams that make you feel good. But the moon is right on top of now. The moon has just joined Neptune and Mercury. So, wow, what a dreamy time this is. Let's take one more on this Seven of Cups and the Page of Pentacles. And we've got the Seven of Swords. Wow. So another seven. All right. So what I'm thinking is... Don't make any moves now. Don't make that phone call yet. Be intelligent. The divine is telling you to be intelligent because you need to be careful with illusions. You need to be careful with deception. You know, take this message with a grain of salt. Wait until you feel certain before you actually reciprocate, you know, the message or make the change because pages are all about change and it's funny that this pentacle is right here on the king of swords so take it one step at a time you've got two sevens here which the two sevens equal 14 and temperance is saying temper yourself so i think that this king of swords is actually grabbing at straws right now Seriously? Okay. Dear Capricorn, I would like to take just one more card on this Four of Swords, which is right on top of the Lovers, the Lovers card. 
so if you're making a head over heart decision of course you know you need to go with your heart there's no doubt about that and we've got the knight of wands so yeah looks like the knight of wands is someone who is moving um, someone who travels okay again it's Sagittarian energy this is the player card and it is right on top of the four of swords so the person that you've been dealing with the air sign was a cheater that's what I'm thinking and as I said they probably travel for work and they could even be from a foreign background different culture so let me take some Sabila's dear Capricorn very very interesting reading very interesting indeed I'm going to take three Sabila's first of all on your foundation so the Wheel of Fortune with the Judgment Calling, Judgment Card. And we have Omaggio di Preziosi, which is the Precious Gift. This is the Hermit, Pensiero. Six, it's like the Six of Pentacles, so it's it's like the card of Libra let's say or it's the solicitor um, it's also of course with the six of Pentacles it's usually um, saying that it's a card of balance but it's sometimes it's it's not in sync so there could be an imbalance of giving and receiving around your home let's say so it can go either way but the pensiero is someone that's seriously thinking they're in hermit mode remember how I said that Virgo and the Hermit comes to mind well this is you in your home and you know what doing your homework doing your detective work is going to bring you the gift and we've got melancholy melancholia which is a like the five of Pentacles <clears throat> so obviously both of you not are not feeling good now all these cards these Sibylas they're all Pentacles but you know what if we add them together the 8 6 and the 5 they equal 19 which is the number of the Sun and 19 if you add it together it's a 10 so it's a completion let me just take one more little Sabila on that because I can see that obviously it's been tough on you there's a bit of depression here but you know the Omaggio di Preziosi is right on top of the Wheel of Fortune so Jupiter is lucky let's take one more card oh wow <laughs> Capricorn you know that when um, my ruler Mercury is right on top of Neptune which says Neptune is spirit so it looks like my channeling with spirit is really on the ball right now which I'm loving that I really am I'm loving it for you guys so the change is coming the change is really really coming it's on its way dear Capricorn I know how hard it's been for a lot of you it's been really really difficult so yeah let's take on the King of Swords the Ace of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands and we've got Amore <laughs> that's funny and I was feeling when I took the card oh my god I was thinking um, yes no and then I took the card but anyway it's the four of cups which is up here so yes if this is an offer that's you know as I said he's trying to grab at straws if this is an offer that's coming from this king of swords um, I don't know about that let's take more cards We've got the Fidelta, which is the Nine of Cups. Okay. Loyalty, companionship, friendship. Logically, this is someone who's very loyal. And remember, I said that he's he more than likely he's a player. Let's see what else we've got. And here we've got La Matrice, which could be another woman, of course. Um, this is like a fire sign. It's like the Queen of Wands. So for those of you I'm going to say that have got strong fire and that would be Leo in your chart 
then you could be the ones that this King of Swords is the same as the King of Cups. For those of you that um, that this is not the same person, then this is probably another, you know, fiery energy, a fiery female that is in the picture. Yeah. Let's take one more spiel on that. Yeah. So if we add the 4, 9 and the 12, that's 25 and that equals 2 and 5 is a 7. So the 7 of Cups is the illusion. Yes, it's Pisces and it can be deceptive. Let's take one more card and we've got the 10 of Cups here, which is Europe. So is that why this person is flying? Maybe they're moving to Europe. That's where their heart is. Maybe they're dealing with someone who's living near a um, energetically very spiritual sort of a place and it's something constant something that hasn't changed you know that's really really strange so many messages here which are like it's it's a bit of a funny reading I feel here so let's see what the divine position no, not the divine position. I'm actually going to look at the tower with the uh, Queen of Swords and the Six of Cups. So we've got Belvedere, which is like the Three of Cups, being on the lookout, waiting for someone to come through, come into the picture. We've also got a visitor, the Vecchia Signora, Vecchia Signora, which could be a situation that has matured, or this could be someone that is actually guiding you, advising you, yeah? And here we've got the news that's coming through, and the news is coming from afar, usually with this card. Let's take one more. Now, the Vecchia Signora is someone who is a bit older. She is the Two of Swords. So... Two of Swords is a decision. Maybe the advice that you are receiving or the news that comes in is going to make you uh, be in the energy of the Two of Swords, needing to have to make some sort of a decision. Let's take one more. And we've got Il Namiko. So Il Namiko is very much like the death card for me because he's holding a snake and the snake is the enemy, of course, but the snake does shed its skin. So the tower is bringing the change. So this is like karma breaking. It is a number 11. The karma breaking and changing, transforming the negativity. Another card. Oh, wow. Transforming the negativity into something that is amazing. So this is... This card says that you receive everything that you desire. This is the most positive, Sibila, Gran Consolazione, which is a major, a big consolation. So, you know, it's the Seven of Wands. Again, remember I said the Queen of Cups has the Seven of Wands, so she's been sticking to what she needed, what she believed in. Yeah. All right, dear Capricorn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an angel answer for you. I would love to just take, keep taking cards, but um, the readings are getting a bit too long. So for Capricorn, Spirit Guides and Angels, can you please answer the question that is burning for Capricorn? Capricorn, Spirit Guides and Angels, Archangel Michael may have an answer for Capricorn. And then even if the card does not tell you anything, I will read from the book and maybe you can receive, even from one word, you can receive your message. So the understanding will be from you and for you. Mm. Well, I'm going to take two cards because they're the ones that I need to take, so... Let's go. So we got, <laughs> we've got, don't stop, 
you're ready. So don't stop people and this could be two different messages for two different uh, groups of you. Okay. So some of you have already started the changes, others of you are ready to start implementing them now. So let's see. This is not the time to give up. Continue to move in the direction of your hopes, dreams or plans. You are on the right path. And you should see progress as long as you stay the course. It's very important that you stand your ground and believe in yourself. Don't let others intimidate you into quitting. Mm. Just because they don't have your vision doesn't mean you shouldn't follow your heart. And remember I said... Follow your heart and listen to your heart. Let's see the you're ready. All your past experiences have led to this moment. You've studied and grown spiritually in many ways. There is nothing more to do. You're ready to move forward and to embrace the person you know in your heart you are meant to be. So yeah. Lovely, lovely message. Oh, the world is anxiously awaiting the contributions that following your life purpose will provide. You may have to put yourself first in this situation. It's time to do what is right for you. And, you know, that's not surprising at all. Not at all surprising, dear Capricorn, that you are putting in so hard work, so much hard work, always for others. You're always sacrificing. So, yeah, it's time to... Look at number one, which is you. All right. I do hope that this was helpful for all of you, for most of you. If not, please watch your moon and rising. Your Venus if you're female, your Mars if you're male. And if you know your north node, your natal north node, then do watch that as well. So sending you all lots of love. See you soon. Okay, I just looked up the... Uh, the Rose by Met Bet Midler. Oh my God, I can't even say her name. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description box below and I would like for those of you that have been dealing with this King of Swords, um, actually I'd like for all of you just to go and um, go to that link and sit through the song and watch the lyrics right till the end. And that's a very strong message that I need to give to you so it's going to be um, important for a lot of you to see so please do that especially now that in the northern hemisphere of course it's spring in the south southern hemisphere it's autumn so you know that's got a lot to do with this song please watch it and let me know what you think in the comments below thank you so much dear capricorn i'm so blessed to be able to give you this message I love it. Thank you.